Welcome to Accelerate System Performance with the Zinc 7000 All Programmable SOC. In this video, we will take a look at the value of coprocessing and the Zinc 7000 AP SOC Accelerator Coherency Port. Next, we will investigate methods for attaching and using coprocessor accelerators. And finally, we will examine a coprocessing design example. As you can see from the Zinc architecture diagram, the accelerator coherency port, or ACP, is connected directly to the programmable logic, also known as PL. This is what gives Zinc low latency and predictability for coprocessing accelerators. It is this low latency path that enables the offloading of processing tasks to coprocessors implemented in the programmable logic. As you will see, coprocessor offloading can provide dramatic software performance improvements. The ACP port allows an external processing element, peripheral, accelerator, or I.O., to be coherent with the processor and to have the same access as the processor to cache, on-chip memory, also known as OCM, or DDR memory. The Xilinx implementation of the ACP provides a direct connection between the programmable logic and the L1 caches. This is a very low latency path, is deterministic, and there are no switches in the path. Event signaling is provided to reflect updating of the cache data. This enables notification of change and ensures that the processor and coprocessor are aligned in the shortest possible time. The interface is optimized for low latency, good bandwidth, and cache data sharing. Obviously, passing blocks of data larger than the L1 cache size will result in reduced performance. With Zinc, there are several techniques for attaching coprocessors. The first method is attaching a coprocessor to a general purpose slave port on the PS. In this case, the coprocessor is accessed as a register interface with a memory mapped address. It is the simplest way of attaching a coprocessor. Some users may find it easiest to drag and drop a GPO interface into their design and then attach the coprocessor to the GPIO interface. This approach is best for applications not requiring high bandwidth or large amounts of data transfer. The second method of attaching a coprocessor is via a high performance port. The high performance port provides high bandwidth connectivity between a PL based accelerator and either the DDR memory or the OCM memory. The coprocessor requires a DMA engine to move the data between its local buffer and the PSDDR or OCM memory. The OCM memory has a latency nearly equal to that of the L2 cache and is much lower latency than DDR memory. Thus, for latency reasons, if the data set will fit in the OCM, then it is best to use the OCM rather than the DDR memory. The third method of attaching a coprocessor is via the accelerator coherency port. The ACP interface provides very low latency connectivity between a PL-based accelerator and the L1 caches of the A9 processors. As in the previous example, the coprocessor requires a DMA controller to move the data between its local buffer and the L1 data caches. For many applications, coprocessors attached via the ACP will enable the highest coprocessing performance. Typical operation of the coprocessor occurs as follows. Once the data is ready for processing, the A9 processor signals the coprocessor via the slave port that it may begin processing the data. The communication may include the address of the data. The coprocessor initiates a DMA transfer from the memory, in this case L1 cache, to its local buffer. 
The coprocessor processes the data and returns the results into a second buffer. The coprocessor initiates a DMA transfer from the buffer to the memory, L1 cache. Finally, the coprocessor signals the A9 processor that the data processing has been completed. The processor may then use the data passed to it. Now let's take a look at a coprocessing example. A CT scan acquires a large data array via taking multiple images as an emitter and sensor are rotated around a body. The data set must be processed via a back projection algorithm to produce a two-dimensional image that may be viewed. The application was implemented in software using a public domain algorithm. The application runs on top of SMP Linux and is floating point compute intensive. Upon profiling, it was discovered that two functions were consuming the majority of the time. These functions were extracted and using Vivado HLS converted to IP cores that were attached to the PSACP port. It is important to note that all of the remaining code is run on the ARM processors, including the Linux operating system, the majority of the application, including memory allocation, file I.O., and additional functions that are part of the back projection algorithm. This example runs the design first using entirely software. Next, the example runs the design using the two coprocessor accelerators. The second case is visibly significantly faster and it has been measured to be eight times faster than the software-only version. The implementation requires single f precision floating point and provides 10 gigaflops of floating point performance. And I like to point out that our equivalent performance is that of an 800 megahertz processor times an acceleration of 8 or 6.4 gigahertz of processing performance. This is unobtainable with any single core general purpose processor. To summarize, software acceleration via PL-based coprocessors provides significant value in many areas. The first, integration. The tight integration of the PS with the PL is what enables coprocessors to be effective. They are simply not viable when considered Restarting, integration. The tight integration of the PS with the PL is what enables coprocessors to be effective. They are simply not viable when one considers a two-chip solution of a processor and an external FPGA containing accelerators. Access to the accelerators is handicapped by the latency of going off-chip from the processor to the FPGA-based accelerator and then back again. Performance. As seen in this video, coprocessor accelerators can yield eight times or more software acceleration, surpassing what a single core high performance processor can provide, and in many cases, what a multi-core general purpose processor can deliver. Bomb cost reduction. Cost reductions are obtained both by the integration of a separate processor and an FPGA and by delivering performance levels equaling expensive high-end multi-core processors. Power reduction. While not covered in this module, moving software tasks into programmable logic can dramatically reduce system power when compared to general purpose processors. And finally, Design productivity. As shown in this design example, with Vado HLS, one can explore a variety of design options for coprocessor accelerators and implement the coprocessor at the C level, thereby reducing design implementation time. Thank you for watching this video. For more details about SYNC and additional videos, please visit us at www dot
slash zing. <laughs>